Next on Startup, we head to Austin, Texas to meet up with Jay Kim, the owner of Chillantro. Then we swing by Gilbert, Arizona to talk to April Gould and Sarah Williams, the founders of Goat Yoga. All of this and more is next on Startup. At State Farm, our agents understand what it's like to run a small business because they're small business owners too. State Farm is proud to support Startup and to offer insurance to protect your business needs from local State Farm agents all over the country. Wix.com proudly supports Startup. You can move text, images, and video to create a website exactly the way you want that's compatible with any device. Wix allows you to create your website yourself. Wix.com. Every business has a story, including yours. In fact, everything your customers see and touch tells a story about your business. The UPS Store proudly supports Startup and all of the entrepreneurs creating stories worth telling. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. Today, I'm heading to my old stomping grounds, Austin, Texas, to meet up with Jay Kim, the creator of a unique Korean barbecue concept called Chilantro. We're meeting at one of the newest of his five locations in an area of town called East Austin. From what I've learned about Jay, he cut his teeth in an old beat up food truck in the hectic late night bar district called Sixth Street until he was finally able to expand to a traditional brick and mortar location. I'm curious to find out how he went from one food truck to four food trucks, to five restaurants, and how he was able to truly differentiate his menu and become a forerunner in Austin's flourishing and highly competitive food scene. I was born and raised in Seoul, Korea. Moved to the States when I was 12 years old. Did your mom or your family, grandparents, anybody, uh, did they cook a lot when you were young? My grandma is a great cook on my mom's side. Uh, my mom's uh, not a good cook. I wouldn't say she's the best, but I love the food industry. I got into the food industry when I was young because that's the only job that I could find to be a dishwasher and a server. I started as a dishwasher too. Did you? That was awesome. my very first job. Yeah, I, I still miss it. Yeah. Maybe I'll get another opportunity. <laughs> you could dishwasher. I could. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. So did you go to college? Yeah, I did. Uh, I went to Cal State Fullerton. I wanted to be an architect and uh, build my own restaurant but I quickly realized that I didn't have a talent. So I had an opportunity to open up a rest, uh, coffee shop uh, when I was Great. 21 years old. I wow. ran it for about three and a half years. I was horrible at it. <laughs> I failed miserably, but I learned so much from it. That's, let's get into that. So when you say you failed miserably, uh, there's different degrees of failure. I didn't have a vision for the business. Uh. I, I was literally checking in, checking out, not knowing why I was there. I was just there <laughs> working because I had to, but that experience kind of gave me, like, I should have done this, could have done this, and, yes. and through the cilantro, I told myself, like, I'm not going to tell myself should have, could have, would have. I'm going to actually put it into an action and, and it. do it myself. What is cilantro? We have a vision to inspire the way people eat and think about Korean okay. barbecue. So traditionally, Korean barbecue is sit-down restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, and most of the people like don't know what what comes on, like the side dishes. Like right. they don't even know what they are, uh, and it's intimidating. I would consider our brand as a gateway to learn more about Korean barbecue. How did cilantro start? Starting a restaurant itself is very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires capital to start a restaurant. For me, I couldn't find any investors or bank that wants to uh, lend me money. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was I literally maxed out my credit card and took all my savings just to have enough money for six months. And I went out there and leased the food truck. And that's how I got started. You leased a food truck? Yes. So, so it was built out already, up to code and everything? Up to code, built out, wow. 1980 truck, which is older than me. Uh, <laughs> Leased it, and I said, I'm gonna take a shot at this. How did the first year go with the food truck? 
Oh, it was tough. Uh, 2010 February, I think, was one of the coldest months uh, that, that we had. I parked right next to uh, UT campus and I did $7 in sales. It was horrible. Were you like, yes, I made it? No, I was like, I'm freaking out. And my cook is looking at me and she's like, am I gonna get paid, you know? So we struggled for a while. Uh, and about a month into it, uh, I said, well, I can't do this. I can't survive like this. So I took my food truck to a bar, like where the bars were, late night. Yeah. And I parked there from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. And I just waited for that drunk crowd to come. And then like rest is history because like after that, like we just took off. You made your money off the drugs. First, yes. That is awesome, man. <laughs> what were they like? This is the best thing I've ever had. I don't think they had no idea what they were eating. <laughs> because they think it was a taco truck. So they're like, you made tacos and burritos. Yeah. And like there's no point in having a dialogue with them because you they're like, you just all? give me anything. <laughs> but it was That's good. It. That is so, so they funny. Came, they came like Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. From 2 a.m., 4 a.m., like we were the go-to spot. What was the next big step? Yeah, I think the big step that really made us we were, were our, our, our kimchi fries. And it happened late night, like 2 a.m. We weren't selling kimchi uh, or we were selling fries. And we're like throwing this valuable food away. I caramelized the kimchi put it on the bed of fries, and I literally put everything that was on the truck, and I sold it, sold it at the highest price to our customers that didn't know what to get. Wow. Uh, and really became a hit because South by South came around, and people on social media started talking about how great the kimchi fries were. Next thing you know, it just became a national hit for us. Take me back to that first kimchi fry 2 a.m. experience. Yes. How uh, do you do it, man? Absolutely. So we start with fries, obviously. Okay. Well, and you don't have to kill me after I know the recipe, right? Uh, no, not okay. at all. No problem. Uh, if you could help me put yes. some caramelized kimchi. All right, so one scoop? That's, uh, that's perfect. Okay. So it's caramelized kimchi, so it's smoky and sweet. So what's next? Uh, we got Korean barbecue beef. We have spicy chicken, soy glazed chicken. Does all this go on here? All, all of it goes really? on. Really? Yeah. Okay. We start with cheese, so then the cheese melts on the fries. Oh, I can see why this went over good at 2 a.m. Right? Like, <laughs> And then you got magic sauce, sriracha, and then some cilantro. What was, what's the theory behind these ingredients together? I just put everything that was on the truck. And I was like, I'm just gonna call it kimchi fries. I gotta try so it. Gotta Is it with fries. a fork? Yeah. I think that could too. be the perfect bite, man. I don't know. Let's do it. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Mm. That's incredible, man. Thank you. Wow. You know, the brand is exploding. Um, one food truck, did you think I need more food trucks or is the next logical step brick and mortar? What did you do? While we were operating food trucks and growing food trucks, I would pitch to investors that like, hey, like we want to get into a brick and mortar business. Can you yeah. invest in us? And everybody would say no. One day, uh, this business owner, you know, uh, reached out to me and said, I think we're closing. Do you want to buy me out? I think I got lucky with one bank and I said, you know, just $200,000 is all I need. Uh, and it ended up working out. So what'd you do with the 200 grand? You bought the guy out, right? I bought the guy out. Explain what buyout means for you. I wasn't interested in their brand. I was interested in putting my brand into the physical location. So I literally bought out the lease that they had and uh, everything that in the four wall. All the contents and the lease? Yes. All we had to do was, uh, change out the interior design and we're, we were in for business. How many locations have you opened to the present day? As we grew, uh, banks started wanting to give us, loan us money. It's a <laughs> strange figure. thing. Yeah. Uh, so we were able to take out loans and uh, uh, we were able to open our fifth location um, here at uh, South Shore District. Tell me a little bit about Austin in general. The culture here is very young. Uh, there's a lot of music scene here is awesome, uh, very artistic city. So I think that our cuisine like fits really well, and they embrace uh, you know food truck, food trailer culture here. Right. You get a lot of college students here. Yeah, I, I think I would say they're the ones who <laughs> kind of uh, supported us when we are a food truck. College scene is always going to be an integral part for us. Yeah. Uh, because 
Now I started the business when I was 26. I could relate more. Yeah, so, absolutely. Like our pricing, the way uh, we cook and prepare our food, uh, it just it, it just fit. How does it rate in terms of Korean barbecue? Fantastic. I love this place because it's a fusion of Korean and Mexican food, which is very Texas. So <laughs> right, right. They, they can pretty much fuse anything with the, with a taco. Right? right, pretty much. Yeah. What is your favorite thing on the menu? Kimchi fries, hands down. It's the perfect combination of the things that I love: kimchi, French fries, and right. meat. How right? can you go wrong? You can't go wrong with that. How often do you come? Probably every couple of weeks. My mom and my sister are in town visiting from Korea, so this is one of the first places wow. I had brought them to. Is hey. We should go get some cilantro. So it is a must stop when you have people yes. in visiting. Yeah. When people come visit me in Austin, one of the things that I do is take them to Zilka Park, Barton Springs, and then cilantro. Four tr food trucks, five locations. Uh -huh. What's next, man? Uh, we want to continue to grow. Like, we want to take over the world. We want everybody uh, to experience uh, our cuisine. Do you have any, any sort of advice for, for immigrant business owners? I think there's a huge benefit in being an immigrant and, and going through the struggles and challenges in life. Some challenges of being an immigrant business owner is uh, just feeling like an underdog, having the resources available for you. That was challenging for me. But what I was able to do uh, was, you know, do my best to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Thanks for taking time to meet with us today. Thank you so much. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Jay do it? Let's find out. He started with around $30,000 in the bank and a credit score of over 700. He spent around 60,000 to open the business that he acquired from his personal savings and maxing out credit cards. He's been open since 2010 and the business is currently profitable. The one word that Jay would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is grit. Jay, through his own decree, started a food truck in 2010 that has received national attention. All credited to his culinary invention, kimchi fries, derived from a combination of leftover ingredients and divine intervention. And from this, Jay has turned the simple food truck operation into a monolithic necessity for locals and tourists alike. He even caught the attention of Shark Tank and was able to score a $600,000 deal. Jay exudes positivity, and I believe that his unrelenting drive is what will continue to make Chilantro the quintessential attraction for anyone with an appetite. For more information, visit our website and search episodes for Chilantro. Yoga is a set of physical, mental, and spiritual practices or disciplines which originated in ancient India. Today, yoga is wildly popular with a broad variety of schools and practice styles. As a low-impact activity, yoga can provide the same benefits as any well-designed exercise program, reducing stress and improving your general health. Today, I'm heading to Gilbert, Arizona to meet up with Sarah Williams and April Gould the creators of Goat Yoga. Yes, I have the exact same question as you. What in the world do goats have to do with yoga? Well, we're about to find out. What is goat yoga? Let's start with that. <laughs> goat yoga is basically doing yoga with goats. <laughs> Hence the name. Yeah. It's that simple. It's very simple. <laughs> How was it created? Like, who thinks of that? My friend Sarah and I, we wanted to do a business together, and Sarah does yoga, and I have goats, and so, voila, like. There you go. No what brainer, do we, right? Like, what do we have? What can we <laughs> what do? What do we have? What can we bring to the table, right? Tell me about that first conversation. We should do goat yoga. I have a paddleboard company. It slows down a lot in the winter, because nobody in Arizona rents paddleboards if it's under 90 degrees, except for Canadians. And, Michig and Michiganders. Yes. Arizonans are kind of wusses when it comes to temperature. Yeah. So I was like, April, we need to do something um, in the winter, like with your goats. Let's just do goat yoga. And she's like, why not? Let's just try it. Honestly, it's, I'm trying to make yoga more interesting. Yoga is intimidating. If you go into a fancy studio and you're paying $25 a class and everyone's decked out in their Lululemon, you're not gonna get regular people in there. Regular people will come try paddleboard yoga because they don't care if they fall in. They'll come to goat yoga because it's in a pasture. 
Right, it is a little intimidating for people that have ever tried, because they, they want to be in like perfect yoga shape before right. going to their first yoga class, and that defeats the purpose, right? Our motto at Goat Yoga is goats don't judge, goats just love. Oh, that's fantastic. You guys are killing it with these marketing <laughs> slogans. Tell me about goats. When did you get into goats? When my husband and I moved out here, we just, nothing was around us. And so we needed friends for my kids and we needed lawnmowers. So we got goats. And they, <laughs> we do nothing else with them, just yoga. But we just play with them and they're our pets. And is there any specific training that you have to do with the goat to get it to jump on someone's back like it does? Yes, yes, we do train them. I have been um, working out with my goats for a while. I was on American Ninja Warrior. They called me the Goat Whisperer because I would do push-ups and squats with my goats. And so they were kind of used to like jumping on my back and um, interacting with me in that way. And so when we introduced them to goat yoga, they kind of caught on right away. Tell me about the first class. How did it go? How, how did you promote it? What was like step one? The first class, we kind of had to convince some of our social media friends to come. You know, we yep. only had about eight people in our class. And it was mostly to just make a video about goat yoga. And it was just so much fun. Like, we we're blown away how much fun everyone was having. Right. And so we put it on um, social media. And the class after that, we had 30 people. Now we have 100 people every class. A hundred people for a <laughs> yoga class is a lot of people. Yes. yes. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Most yoga studios would be blown away to get those kind of numbers. I know. And, and we have wait lists too. Like we have a hundred people and then we also have like usually 30 each on the wait list. So. This is your first time doing goat yoga? Yes. Tell me about the experience. How did it feel? It was very relaxing because you're doing yoga and then um, it's just so funny to have a goat just jump right up on your back. It's just crazy. And you, it's you can't help but be in a good mood, right? Oh yeah. It just really elevates you. It's so fun and hilarious. How did you hear about it? Um, I found out about it on Instagram and then I took my cousin along. Exactly. Well, and, and I mean, it's such a visual thing to see. You're like, what the heck is this? What am I looking at? Exactly. <laughs> This is a social media monster. It's a giant. Yes. Because people will do the work for you. All I have to do is say hashtag AZ Goat Yoga, hashtag Goat Yoga, and then that just gets more people following us. How much of this is a novelty and how much is actual yoga? So when we started, we really thought people would come one time, but it has been people come and then they bring their friends and then they bring their friends. So we've had people come 12, 15 times. So people do come consistently. I, I left in a really, really good mood. Right. And I think um, it's not necessarily the yoga, it's the atmosphere. Yeah. So it, that you get to play with goats and you're, think of people that work in an office all day. You have fluorescent sure. lights on you, you drive home, you sit in your house, but this is getting you out in nature and there's cute goats and everybody's laughing. Like you can't help, we never have crabby people. Let's talk about location. Yes. Where did, where did it start? It started right here on my Gilbert farm. Like we just have, we have um, three acres here and people just line up alongside the road and do class. What did your neighbors think? What, what the heck's going on here? They thought it was great. And a lot of people have told me that they tell their friends, I live next to the goat yoga lady, you know? So I think they think it's fun. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so did you form an LLC and then opened up an account, obviously? You're, you're a legit business at this point. We are a legit business, yep. We have an LLC, we have all the tax stuff, we have accountants, everything. I would ask about funding, but she already had the goats. You already did the yoga. It didn't it cost us anything. Here. It was maybe a hundred bucks for a videographer. That was it. And that was your entire startup cost. Yep. That's amazing. We oh we do go to the dollar store and buy costumes. 
But we also have grandmas that bring costumes in for the goats. Like they're bored and so they sew costumes for the goats. And, and that is something definitely unique to you guys or yes. do a lot of people dress up their goats? Oh no, we're unique with the goats getting dressed up. They're like circus goats. It's pretty cool people come from out of state just for goat yoga. So you're, you're bringing tourism and travel into oh, the yes. state of Arizona. Oh yes, Arizona loves us. There's the Grand Canyon and goat yoga. Why else would you be here? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's, That's what there is. I love that. Truly. Did you ever think it, from that very first class, this is going to be a full-time business? No, we just kind of try stuff and see if it works. <laughs> yeah, and now with the waiting list, I would say it's working. Yes, it's awesome. And um, we have a great location that we're doing classes at. We started here and just because it's grown so much, we've had to move to a new location and they love us. <laughs> and so they sent you as many classes as you want. So we could probably only handle about three to five classes a week because the goats get tired. So you give the farm a cut oh, doing the yoga? Um, they actually just love us. They just want people to buy eggs. <laughs> Honestly. That is the best business model I've I ever know. heard. Just buy eggs and we're good. How big of a part of your revenue are t-shirts? We brought in $3,500 last month in t-shirts. Wow. And that's just this shirt. We have tanks and t-shirt and that's it. That's so a whole other business. We're working right now to get goat yoga mats because people come to class without mats because they don't do yoga, they come with towels. So we'd love to have a mat that has the Arizona flag with some goats on it. So we're working with an uh, artist right now to get that going. But what's been the biggest challenge in starting this for you? I would probably say um, just keeping up with the demand. You know, we're always getting emails, texts, messages like, like, when is an art class? When's an art class? When's an art class? And it's like, just keeping up with the demand, you know? And that is, that is a real platinum problem to have. That's a good problem I to think have. Every business owner I'm would love to have that problem. I'm not complaining. Would you guys ever, or have you been approached by an investor to say, hey, we can help take, make this something bigger? Yes, but we kind of just like it just being us. <laughs> we haven't thought about that Smart. yet, but Smart. right now we just like that it's small. Yeah. And it, I think that's what people like. If it was a big corporation, I mean, we charge $12 a class. They like our little checkered tablecloth and they like that they get to meet us and email us yeah. and text us, and, you know? You don't want it to be homogenized, just no. to like wash away the character. Right. What advice do you have for, um, for other people out there that have like a crazy wild idea? Do it, just do it. I, I just say, just go for it and it'll happen. Just go for it. Just go for it. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Sarah and April do it? Let's find out. They started with zero dollars in the bank and a combined credit score of around 750. They spent around a hundred bucks to start the business by purchasing a couple of Facebook ads. In their best month of sales, they had a gross revenue of 13,000 from classes and 3,500 from t-shirts. The business is currently profitable and the one word they would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is desire. Being on the road for long periods of time can be grueling, and our crew had an extraordinarily long shoot week. When we woke up this morning, everyone was showing signs of road fatigue. But I have to say, goat yoga changed everything. It's virtually impossible to be disgruntled when you're surrounded by a bunch of baby goats dressed in cute little costumes jumping on your back. Any confusion I had about goat yoga is completely cleared up. They're selling the ability to leave in a much better mood than when you arrived. Sarah and April have struck gold with this concept. And yes, you get in a decent stretch, but this is much more than that. Go Yoga is more about smiles and happiness and being out in nature with a bunch of really cute animals. What's better than that? And again, goes to show you that just about anything is possible. If you're willing to set aside your fear, just give it a try. For more information, visit our website and search episodes for goat yoga. I've learned, and it's a big piece of what we do, I'm focusing on the positive. 
creates more positivity. Uh, it's not how I grew up. With all due respect to my family, I grew up learning how to find what's wrong. I'm good at it, but and it doesn't mean to ignore what's wrong, but I think that I've learned in the beliefs work, you can have negative beliefs about a problem or you could have positive beliefs about a problem. The problem remains either way, but negative beliefs about a problem will lead to negative outcomes and positive beliefs will lead you more likely to positive outcomes. Next time on Startup, we head to Phoenix, Arizona to talk to Thomas Porter, the owner of Porter Barnwood. Then we swing by Houston, Texas to talk to Nicole Burgers, the founder of B2B Honey Collective. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Would you like to learn more about the show or maybe nominate a business? Visit our website at startup-usa.com and connect with us on social media. Every business has a story, including yours. In fact, everything your customers see and touch tells a story about your business. The UPS Store proudly supports Startup and all of the entrepreneurs creating stories worth telling. Wix.com proudly supports Startup, entrepreneurs, and business owners. With Wix, you can drag and drop anything to create a website exactly the way you want. Wix allows you to create your website yourself. Wix.com. At State Farm, our agents understand what it's like to run a small business because they're small business owners too. State Farm is proud to support startup and to offer insurance to protect your business needs.